Now, uh, in real life, to generate stationary waves, we will need to reflect the same wave from the other end. You know why? Because remember the conditions uh, for formation of stationary waves are that you must have uh, two waves and that the two waves must be travelling opposite directions and then the two waves must have the same frequency, amplitude, same speed, everything. That means you have two identical speed, uh, two waves with identical, everything identical and travelling in the opposite direction. Uh. So how do we get two waves travelling in the opposite direction that is perfectly identical? It's by reflecting the same wave off the other end. So the first uh, example of stationary waves that we generate using this method is using a stretch string. So what is a stretch string? You'll notice that you have an oscillator connected to a signal generator. And then as you adjust uh, the signal generator, so signal generator, what can you adjust? You can adjust the amplitude, how, how high this one vibrate, and also how fast, which is the frequency, how fast. That means you can vibrate slowly, or faster or faster than that. Okay? So the what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix a certain amplitude. So let's say we fix a certain amplitude like this, but we're going to adjust the frequency slowly from low to higher. So what will happen as this one oscillates, the string here, can you see is tied to this uh weight here over a pulley? Now this movable bridge is optional. The movable bridge will enable you to control the distance where you want to see stationary wave. Right? So let's say uh, you put a movable bridge here, then you can push it back or forth, then only the part from here to here you get stationary wave. But if you don't have a movable, br movable bridge, then the stationary wave will be formed throughout the whole thing. Uh. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Uh. Now, the weights here will give you the tension in your string. Okay, so when you turn on the signal generator, as this oscillator or vibrator moves up and down, it will send a wave down the string. So the string will start to vibrate, hit this bridge and bounce back. So what you will get is two waves travelling in the opposite directions. So you will get stationary waves when resonance occurs. Now what is resonance? Now because we are generating stationary waves using this type of reflection go and coming back, we will need to have resonance before we can see stationary waves. Now if this was an ideal world, or perfect world where you can have two waves coming from opposite directions. We don't know come from where, from infinity, from infinity. As long as they have same frequency, then at any frequency also you will see stationary wave. But because ours is not coming from infinity or infinity, we are reflect, we are sending them, reflecting, sending, reflecting. We need to have resonance. Now, why must have resonance? Huh? Let me explain to you. Now, let's say you send in the wave here, so it goes and when it hits the bridge, remember it bounces back. Now, when the, when the wave reaches back this oscillator or vibrator, your vibrator is also generating a new wave at the same time, right? So imagine the wave, the, the wave that is coming back. That means, let's say the string was about to go up, but at the same time you push down. That means you will cancel the wave. So we have to time it exactly in such a way that every time you have to wait for the wave to come back already and it's going up already and it's about to go down and that's the same time you also push down. So then you will add on to the energy rather than cancelling the energy. So because of this limitation where you are reflecting and generating, reflecting and generating, we will need resonance. Understand? Well, of course, in a perfect world where it comes from infinity, then there's no need to have resonance. Any frequencies, you will also get. Understand? Uh? So there's no one particular or no particular frequencies where it will happen. But now we will only see at certain frequencies because of resonance. Okay? Now, so let's look at uh, what type of uh, uh, shape you will get. You will, you will get uh. So what you will notice is you will have the signal generator here which can adjust frequency or amplitude connected to your oscillator vibrator here. Uh. So then, it was, then you will notice uh, that it will be tied to uh, the other end, which is with R, uh, which is tied to the retort stand. Uh. So here, the, the, the person who did the experiment didn't use the pulley and the weight, which is not so good uh, in this case, because like this, we wouldn't know what is the tension in the string. Okay, so here he wasn't interested in tension, so he just tied it. Uh. 
But if you want to know the tension, you use a pulley, then you use the weights, then the tension will be equals to the weights of the pulley, la, or weights of the that you hang on the pulley. La. Right. So what will what you will notice uh, in this video as it starts to increase the frequency, first you will see one loop, then it will disappear, then you'll see two loops, then it will disappear, then you'll see three loops, and then disappear as it slowly increases the frequency. So where you see the loops are, whether it's one or two or three, is when resonance occurs. In between, there will be no stationary wave. So you will see uh, that uh, when it starts from a low frequency, which is somewhere here, uh, wait, uh, okay, when it starts from a low frequency, you will notice that you will get one loop first. And if you look at slow motion, uh, so how do you get slow motion? You actually use a high-speed camera with slow motion playback. And then you will see this moving. So can you see this is a stationary wave that you can't really see moving left to right or right to left. It's only moving up and down. So when you increase the frequency further, this uh, uh, wave will disappear for a while. And then when it reappears, you will see two waves. Alright, so he's going to increase the frequency and you will see two waves. Alright, so you will see uh, that as it slowly increases the frequency back to that just now, you start with zero. Okay, just repeating now. Uh, and then he will see uh, one wave, like just now what we saw in uh, slow motion. Then when he increase further, you will see two waves. Okay, so now this is when he got the two waves, right, just now. So now he's going to put it in slow motion. Alright, so uh, let's observe uh, in slow motion how it looks like. This is how it looks like. So you will notice uh, that actually they're taking turns to move up and down. That's why we say if this is a node, this is a node, in between two nodes, they're moving in phase. But on either side of a node, they'll be moving in anti-phase. That means when this one is going down, this is going up. Then when it's going down, this is going up. So what you will see now is he will increase the frequency and then the two loops will disappear and then you get the three loops. Huh? But you notice that these points are the nodes and nodes and these are nodes. This is what we assume that's not moving. Huh? So now uh, you will see uh, if it increase further, now you will get three loops. And these three loops are also same as what we said, that the oscillations are also between two nodes, they'll be in phase. That means every point between these two are moving up and down together. Every point between two nodes are moving up to get up and down together. But on either side of a node, that means if this is a node, then every oscillation here will be 180 degrees with every oscillation here. Alright? This is what you see. Okay, so this is how it looks for three loops okay and you will uh, see the nodes and the anti nodes so anti nodes are where we have a maximum oscillations which are here or here or here now when you are drawing the shape of the stationary wave for a stretch string you must also be able to know how to calculate the wavelength frequency and also when to predict I mean you must know to predict uh, at which frequency will the next stationary wave before so generally speaking because uh, your your experiment for stretch string this is the tied to the oscillator and this is tied to your pulley let's say so therefore this end must always be a node this end must always be a node as well now even though uh, this one is moving a little bit up and down it will still consider consider it as a node it's an assumption because if you compare it to your anti node uh, if I draw the shape of the stationary wave like this, you will notice that at the anti node, these oscillations are way bigger than this. So here we consider it as a node. So it means no matter what happens for a stretch string, you must always start with a node and must end with a node. Okay, and the and the symbol for a stationary wave you can draw like this, huh? Alright, you can do a double loop like this. Okay, this is a symbol for your stationary wave. Now so when is the first time you get resonance? What is the wavelength and frequency? Now, assuming this is your oscillator and this is your pulley. Now, the first time you get resonance, which is a stationary wave, you must start with a node. Let's say we start from here. And then you must also end with a node, right? Now. So if I move all the way from here to here, the first time I get a node is here. So start with a node, end with a node. So the first shape that you're going to get is going to be this. Alright, so this is your stationary wave. Now, let's say the length of the string here is fixed. Uh, because the length between your oscillator and pulley is fixed. And let's call it length L. Uh. So how many wavelengths is this? 
how many is this? How many wavelengths do we consider this? Remember, node to node is half a wavelength, right? So this is lambda over two equals to L. So lambda equals to two L. And this frequency at which you get stationary wave is called the fundamental frequency, F0. Why? Because you cannot get resonance below this frequency. How I know? Because the shortest uh, shape uh, between a node and the next node is here. You cannot have shorter than this. So therefore, this one gives me my lowest frequency. Now, if I want to predict uh, the next two frequencies, what do I do? So let me just move this up a bit. Alright, so the next two frequencies will be how? Uh, now, if I start with a node, first time I end with a node is here. Uh, so second time I end with a node, it will be here. So it's between here to here. So when I draw the next shape that I'm going to get, so means if this is still my oscillator and still my pulley, so the second shape I will get is this. This, and the second time I get resonance, I will surely get this shape. And how many wavelengths is this? One. One. So your lambda equals to L. So you will notice that from here to here, my wavelength divided by two. So because the formula is V equals to F lambda and the V is constant for the same type of wave in the same medium, so F is inversely proportional to lambda. So therefore, when your wavelength is divided by 2, the frequency mass times 2. So your next time you get resonance is 2F0. That means if the first time you get is 20 Hz, I can predict the next time I get it will be 40 Hz. If the first time is 15 Hz, the second time surely 30 Hz is 2 times of it. And the third time you get resonance, okay, so we still start with your oscillator and your pulley. It's the third time you get resonance, you must start with a node and end with a node right now. So first time you ended with a node was here, second time you end with a node is here, third time you get this here. So therefore, the third time you get resonance, you will get a shape like this. Like this. And how many wavelengths will this be? So from here to here, so yeah, from here to here, it is one wavelength right now. Here to here is half, uh, so it's three and a half wavelengths. So your equation will be three over two lambda equals to L. So therefore your lambda will be two L over three. So you refer back to the start because this is a fundamental frequency. From two L becomes two L over three. That means what do you do to your wavelength? Divide by three. So the frequency mass times three. So you get three F naught. So if the first time you get resonance is 15 hertz, second time will be 30 hertz, third time will be 45 hertz. That's how you predict. So you must be able to see this up. And you'll notice a trend. You look at the L here, you'll notice that at first the lambda is 2L over 1, then 2L over 2, then 2L over 3. Fair enough, because it's 2L over 1, 2L over 2, 2L over 3. So general formula, which is very useful, is lambda equals to 2L over n, where your n is an integer. That's it. Alright, so you help, it will be helpful to remember this.